So Daniel Ek is the co-founder and CEO of Spotify, the music streaming giant. Today, it's worth over $50 billion on the public markets. And not only that, Daniel Ek was our first cover subject of the inaugural Under 30 issue a decade ago. We put him on the list when Spotify had just launched in the United States. Um, they had a net worth of around $2 billion as a company. Fast forward today, Daniel Ek has not only saved the music industry, he's created a $50 billion company, and he himself is worth more than $4 billion. So we thought, what a perfect person to go full circle a decade later and put Ek back on the cover of the Under 30 issue. When you meet him, he is soft-spoken and has this zen-like calm to him. He's very quiet and understated, but that hides an absolute relentless drive to get things done and to build Spotify. What's really interesting about Daniel is he came into his music business as a young outsider. You know, music is dominated by New York and Hollywood and London and all these high-powered managers and artists, and in comes Daniel Ek from Stockholm, Sweden of all places. Young, very understated, and he was able to do what no one else could do, and that was combined tech and combined experience, but also combined the business and record contracts to get everyone to agree to give him all these songs and then monetize it. And he keeps that drive going over and over again. This is what Ek had to say when we sat down with him in 2012. I got handed a guitar when I was like four, and I got handed a computer when I was five. So it was always like my destiny, I think, to do something with music and technology and do it in some shape or form. We also had Napster pretty early on in Sweden, and we had Ubiquitous Broadband. And what that meant was that people were consuming so much music so early on, like 1999. And Napster changed pretty much the whole world for me. I mean, it's the internet service that changed my life the most, I would say. But the unfortunate part was obviously they didn't pay artists. So really at that point when Napster shut down, I started thinking about how can you make it better and uh, only you know many years after uh, in 2006 was the time when I felt now I know the answer and I got back to it and I really went to try to convince the record label to say hey um, here's a more convenient and better way to piracy and by doing that you're gonna grow the music industry again. 20 years ago CDs reigned supreme. If you wanted music especially if you were younger, you'd have to save up your money, maybe ask your parents or someone to drive you to the Tower Records or record store, buy that CD, and then you know, maybe you'd you know, tape things on the radio, but you had to own these, these discs. Then Napster came around in the early 2000s, and suddenly everyone's computer became a universal jukebox. Because of file sharing, you could grab any song you wanted, and suddenly you had this entire infinite jukebox at the tip of your fingers. The record labels and the music industry, which were so tied to ownership, so tied to CDs, were going in an absolute plunge. And everyone thought it will never come back because this piracy is so hard to stop and it's so easy. So Daniel Ek and his team at Spotify said, can we build something that had the ease of Napster, the unlimited music of Napster, but in a way that A, has a better user interface than piracy, no viruses, and more importantly, it would actually bring money back to the artists. And that was the special sauce. Like literally, I was in their office every week for three years, um, just hammering them and like every argument that they had, I was trying to find a counter argument and I adapted my strategy and came back. So persistence is like the key, but I would also say, what I did early on, probably the smartest decision I've ever done, was uh, we built the product that we knew would change uh, consumers' lives. So we built it and we got it in the hands of the record label guys. And you know, after a while, once you've started playing around with Spotify, you realize, okay, holy shit, this is different and this is the future. The recording industry in 2011 was just over 14 billion total revenue global in all recorded music and streaming was a tiny bit of that revenue. It was only about $600 million of sales, making up about 4% of the global haul. Fast forward to today, that number has jumped 40%. Last year, the global recording industry made just under $22 billion, and streaming made up 62% of that entire revenue. So it's gone in a decade from 4% to 62%, and it didn't cannibalize. In fact, it grew that pie that much bigger. Daniel went from a young, shy, 28-year-old startup founder to now a CEO of a publicly traded company. Um, he's married now, has two girls. It's been a big 10 years.